Well, hi there, and I want to show you the latest and greatest thing from Dylan. It's their brand new digital, electronic, digital, whatever, cartridge counter. And you put this on your press, and, and um, well, I'll put it right here. So when a cartridge goes through, it'll count. And it's made to fit the uh, Dillon 1050. I'm kidding you, of course. Dillon doesn't make this, I do. <clears throat> this is the first and only one. Um, I, I got a 3D printer and you know, started looking around for projects and things to print. It's hot out here, I'm sorry if I'm sweating like a pig. And I thought, well, you know, what about something that would count the rounds as they come off the press? Now what's neat is it's got a, a little ear here and a hook in the back to just clip right onto the press with no modifications whatsoever. And in addition to that, you've got this hole right here and you can use a quarter inch bolt, inch and a half, two inches long, whatever, and stick it through there and give it a little extra security. Although I tell you, it'll, it'll sit there all day with, with nothing but just sitting there. So <clears throat> that's, that's, that's the deal. Let me show you, let me show you how it works. The whole thing is powered with a wall wart. When you, when you plug it in, it comes up. Now, if it looks like it's blinking, that's simply because of the shutter rate not matching the pulsing of the LEDs. I promise you, if you look at it, it just looks steady as a rock, 0017. But so be it. You've got buttons on the front. You can reset it with the red one. The green one makes it increment up manually. So you, if you need to adjust your count, if for some reason one fell on the floor and you didn't want to, you know, whatever, you can, you can overwrite. If you accidentally got a double count or whatever, you can count down with that. So you've got control over it. It's not a really big deal. Let's, let's reset it and what happens is they go in there and a sensor, <laughs> only when they go in there, and a sensor, they, they can fall any old way. Oops, as long as they fall in there, they can go in sideways, they can go in that way, they can go in that way, they can hit at the edge, you know, it doesn't matter. They're just gonna trip it every time. So. It says eight. How many do I have here? Eight. I hope so. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yes. So that's 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 the deal. Um, it works with the exact same sensor that I use on the um, uh, bullet feeder, the Mr. Bullet feeder, and works just fine. And these are about eight or nine bucks from Amazon. Um, the other thing you gotta have is on the inside and that's, and that's the, the digital display. Um, you can get these in different configurations. I did a fair amount of searching around, finally decided Amazon was the easiest bet. And I got this and it, it's just the display. It does not come with any switches. You have to add those yourself, but Hey, that's what we do, right? And uh, I think it's about $10, maybe, something like that. The little switches, uh, you can get a 10 of these for seven or eight dollars, I think. So, they're, you know, they're not too much. Now, all of the, all of the stuff is hidden underneath, and, and yes, I, I, this is a 3D print. Uh, first of all, I designed it completely from scratch using Autodesk Fusion 360. And this is a lot of fun for me because for 35 years, this is what I did was design products for the company I worked with. They were much bigger products than these. They were big drilling rigs, as a matter of fact. But um, I'm having so much fun with this Fusion 360 and I got a 3D printer for Father's Day. 
So I have been looking for projects to, to do and this was at the top of the top of the list. This was the most ambitious project so far and it took a little over 24 hours to print. But it came out fine. Now I will confess up front, this is the second one. The first one worked, it actually did. It worked pretty well. It didn't have a bottom cover on it. I didn't think that would matter, but after I got to looking at it, there's a lot of wires, I'll show you. A lot of wires and stuff under there and it doesn't look good and so, yeah. So I wanted a cover for it. Uh, the hole going through here, I was off a little bit, made it a little too small. <clears throat> and then I had a problem because when I tried to enlarge it, I broke some of the plastic and so, you know. Had to do a lot of patching with Bondo, but actually it worked, it worked just fine. The one thing, a major change I made though, was originally I had threaded the bottom of this for pipe, pipe thread to uh, use a one inch pipe. Well, that, that works okay, but I tell you what's even better, is just use a slip fit. Just regular good old PVC, and, and friends, that's not going away. Now, if you wanna glue it on there, you can. And as you can see, look at the video here, and you can see that mine sit, sits back a little bit from the edge, and I suspect most presses do, uh, so that if it drops straight out, <clears throat> it, would, it would actually just hit right there on top. So I wanted to use this. I'll add a second one coming in there like that, and then, then guide it down through a pipe into a bucket on the floor. And um, that's the name of that. Come on in close, let me show you underneath here. These are stainless steel Allen head machine screws. I think you can see them pretty good right there. They're just Allen head. And I, I chose to use those instead of just sheet metal type screws that just bite into the plastic. And I, you know, didn't have to, but it looks better. It's also repeatable. I mean, you could put this thing together and take it apart a hundred times and the threads won't wear out on the inside. That one's kind of back up underneath there. It's a little bit, a little bit funky to get to, but you can get to it. And then the, the whole thing comes off like, like that. And there's your, there's your top. And I printed this at the same time as, as the, the rest of the thing. And if you, if you take note here, the, uh, the screws are screwing into uh, brass, little brass fittings that you get from McMaster car. And they are pressed down into the plastic with a soldering iron, which softens the plastic and it goes in. That was an error on my part. If you look carefully, you can see it's a little gnarly looking. I made the holes too small, and so there's some distortion as it was pushing down in there. Kind of see it back up in there. But, you know, just a little bit of work with a file and everything was hunky-dory. Uh, you can see the circuit board. It comes with two uh, wire harnesses, we'll call them. This one has two wires. That's your reset. This one has four wires. It's uh, power plus and power minus, and uh, the w blue wire for counting up and the green wire for counting down. And they connect to the switches. And <clears throat> you, you, you need to use um, these um, double throw switches. Can, can you see that that's what they are? They've got three, three terminals on them, does that? show up down in there. There's three connection points. So the top one is common, the middle one is. At this point, my brain died, so let's just say the top connector is common, the middle connector is normally open, and the bottom connector is normally closed. The bottom one normally closed, and when you push it, that breaks it. And I had to add this 
resistor and capacitor in there because what was happening was the, about every, oh, I don't know, every seventh or eighth cartridge or sometimes more, sometimes less, when it would go through there, if you, well, I can't make you do it. Yeah, that one kind of did it. Do a little swirling around, and what it would do is it would make make the uh, the sensor trigger twice. So you would get a two for one, and of course you don't want that. And the purpose of this is called an RC circuit, and it creates a time delay so the thing comes on and even if it blinks off momentarily this will hold the circuit open for about a half a second or hold the circuit on for about a half a second so any kind of little flickering in there is is just nullified and since you can't possibly get them through there faster than a second <laughs> then that just that doesn't matter that works fine so that's it a little strain relief in there for the for the cable um, not a whole lot of soldering to do. Point being, if you want to make one, uh, I'm going to post all the instructions. Here's that lip. You can kind of see that it goes, fits over the, uh, it fits over the same metal um, bracket that the uh, plastic bin fits over. And then here's the, the one at the back, and it hooks over. There's a about a three-quarter diameter black steel rod that runs across the back, and it supports the uh, the uh, case case feeder uh, over there, and part of the stuff. Well, anyway, this just sets on top of it, and there it is right there. And there's your hole looking down through it. Now, this one is just perfect for 223, but it's not big enough for 308, and I wasn't sure if it'd be a problem with the distance inside sensing, if I made the hole too big, that it might scoot by and not sense it. But uh, that doesn't really seem to be a problem. So I think I can make it quite a bit bigger <clears throat> and accommodate, you know, pretty much anything, um, including 45. Well, thank you for watching. If you want to make one of these for yourself, and I don't sell them, so don't bother to ask me what I make one for you. I won't because it takes too long. But if you've got a printer or if you want to order it, you can do that. You can order it online. That's kind of expensive. I checked the price and online it's, about, I don't know, about $50, $50 $60 to, to get it printed, even out of just the least expensive plastic. If you do it yourself, it's about $5 worth of plastic. That's, that's it. So it's not bad. It's quite a bit of plastic there. And then, you know, you got your little parts. So all together, about $30 maybe for the whole, the whole shooting match. <laughs> shooting match. And so that's it. And it'll, it'll do like that all day. One thing you will have to have in order to make it, and that's this right here. It's a, an 18 millimeter um, with a 1.0 pitch. And that's the same size as the sensor. And, and you, it, it, the, the threads are cast into the plastic, but you can't cast threads that accurately and certainly not that small. On the other hand, the, by having them in there, it makes it a pretty simple task to put this thing in there and run it through. And um, you can get it going quite a ways just with your fingers and then switch over to a socket wrench to take it the rest of the way. And uh, that's it, that's all you have to have. Um, I will put links below to um, where you can download the STL file and that's if you know about 3D printing, that's about all you need and you put that in your printing software and make your part. Um, or that's the part that you would email to an online company that would make the part for you. And uh, the, I'll give you the Amazon links for the switches and for the uh, uh, display, the digital display, also for the sensor. And I don't know, you can figure out. Well, whoa, it, look, power is not critical at all. It'll work anywhere from about, probably from about six to about 20, 18, 20 volts. So, you know, whatever. 
any, pretty much any, and it uses no current. So any little, this one's overkill. Any little wall work will probably do the job. But it does need to be DC, not AC. And uh, the hardware, the screws, I'll put that in there. You can get the screws. I mean, they're 18, uh, I'm sorry, they're M4 by 12 millimeter uh, screws. The, um, the little inserts, you can get them from a lot of places, including Amazon. I got them from McMaster Car. You know, you, I'll give you links to both under there. If you want to make one, good luck with it, and thank you for watching. Dylan, you get an idea here, maybe? Hmm? Hmm? Hmm?